All right, we're talking about simple machines, and in particular, today we're going to talk about inclined planes. And my objective with this video is to make things as easy as humanly possible. I'm going to try to take what textbooks and teachers generally say about simple machines and boil it down to its simplest terms and try to make it easy for you. Well, it all boils down to this. If you want to understand how simple machines work, really all you have to understand is that all machines no matter how complicated or how simple they are have only basically two sides they have an input side where you put work into the machine and they have an output side an input side and an output side and if you can identify the input side and the output side you can do all kinds of figuring on those machines and get all kinds of answers that you thought were really complicated and they really aren't. It works like this. Let's suppose you were holding in your hand a pair of pliers and you wanted to do some work like crack a walnut with that pair of pliers. Well, where do you put your hand to put work into the machine? Well, you put it on the handle of the pliers and when you squeeze the handle of the pliers you're doing work on the handle of the pliers that's the input side of the machine, the handle of the pliers. Where does the work come out? Well, it comes out on the jaws of the plier. That's where you have the walnut. You're going to do work on the walnut. So the output side would be the jaws of the pliers. Well, likewise, if you're working with, a, with an inclined plane and you're trying to use that inclined plane to make work easier to do, then you have to put in a force into the inclined plane. Where do you put that force? Well, if you're going to push this barrel up the inclined plane, you apply that force right there. That's called your force of effort. That's the effort, the push, the force that you're putting into this machine to do work by moving the barrel up the inclined plane. So this side becomes, for this inclined plane, that becomes the input side. I stands for input. So where is the output side of the machine? Well, the output side of this machine, the inclined plane, is where the work comes out. And you have to stop and think, what am I actually trying to do when I use this inclined plane? Well, what you're trying to do is lift this barrel to this height, vertically to this height. That's the work that you're trying to do. You're trying to lift the, the barrel up this inclined plane, ultimately to lift it through this height, which happens to be one meter. So this side over here becomes the output side of the machine. Output side. O stands for output. So you put, you put work or effort into the machine over here on the input side, and it comes out over here on the output side. You lift the barrel. Your ultimate goal here, like I said, was to lift the barrel through this one meter distance. Now you could do that just by coming over here and picking the barrel up, and you do a certain amount of work you would do the same amount of work by pushing it up this inclined plane. The inclined plane doesn't allow you to do more or less work. What the inclined plane does is only to make the work easier to do. And easier means that it's going to decrease the force that you use to apply to that barrel to push it up the inclined plane. It's going to reduce the force. And how does it reduce the force? Well, we're going to look at the two sides and we're going to compare them. This machine has an input side and an output side. And if you want to know how much any machine will help you do work, all you have to do is divide the input side by the output side. That's it. When you divide the input side by the output side, you're actually figuring out something called the ideal mechanical advantage. In other words, in an ideal situation, not including friction or any other outside forces, in a perfect world, how much would this machine assist me in doing this work? How much easier will it make the work easy to do? How much easier will it make the work to do? And, and it works like this. Ideal mechanical advantage, like we said, is a comparison of the input and output sides. That easy. So we're going to divide the input side by the output side. So that becomes, for this machine, it becomes 
the input side, 3 meters right there, 3 meters, divided by the output side, 1 meter. Well, meters is going to factor out. This is just a ratio. It's a comparison. And 1 goes into 3 3 times. So what we're saying here is this machine is going to make work three times easier to do. How? Well, it's going to decrease this effort force by a factor of three. So you can think about it like this. The ideal mechanical advantage multiplies any effort force you put into it, or you can think of it as dividing the resistance force. So if you have a weight of this object, the resistance force, let's say that the weight is 300 newtons. How much do I actually have to apply over here? How much force do I actually have to push on this barrel with to make it move up that inclined plane to do the work? Well, I can figure it out like this. The force of effort. That's the force that you put into the in, to the inclined plane is equal to the resistance force. That's the weight of the object divided by the ideal mechanical advantage, which in this case is going to be three. So this becomes 300 newtons divided by three, which gives me 100 newtons. So I have to push with a force of only 100 newtons in order to move this 300 newton barrel up the inclined plane. That's how easy it is. Understanding how to do calculations with simple machines is simply a matter of understanding that all machines have an input side and an output side. And if you know the size of the input and output side, you can calculate the ideal mechanical advantage. Once you know the me ideal mechanical advantage, that's how much any effort force is multiplied. It's also how much any resistance force is divided by. So that's how it works. It's that simple.